Attempting to make up for Jalen Brunson joining the New York Knicks, Mavericks GM Nico Harrison traded for Christian Wood. Dallas also drafted Jaden Hardy down at pick number 37 and signed JaVale McGee to a three-year contract to be the team's starting center. 2022's postseason saw Luka Doncic and the Mavs fail to do what this franchise did back in 2011, coming up three wins short of advancing to the NBA Finals. But Luka made the Final Four in just his fourth career pro season, more insanely putting up his third playoff appearance already of averaging at least 31 points per game. While the Mavs can expect an even stronger and more skilled version of their superstar in 2022-23, it was clear that if Dallas wanted to get over the hump, they needed to get Luka a lot more help. And that's exactly what the Mavs front office just did. Dallas now has a former 21 point per game score in C. Wood, who can potentially complement Doncic with his playing style, but how much closer are the Mavericks to the Warriors, and what's Luka added to his bag? Before that, just 8.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe. Appreciate all of you who've already done so. To support my channel, leave a thumbs up on this video, and to be friends, plus stay updated on the dopest NBA mixtapes like this one of Luka, make sure you're following me on Instagram at dflowhoops. Now into the content. An anonymous former teammate of Michael Jordan recently was on record as saying Luka Doncic is reminiscent of MJ. Early comparisons to the greatest of all time aren't unfamiliar, as the Slovenian sensation is undeniably carving out a Hall of Fame career in the making. Certain elements, like Luka's passing out of double teams and poise throughout the toughest moments are still maturing, but will only come with more experience. Having said that, Luka's near single-handed carrying of the Dallas Mavericks over the number one seeded 64-win Phoenix Suns in the second round of the 2022 playoffs was a sight to behold. As we broke down in this video, Doncic embarrassed the team from the Valley in Game 7, clowning D-Book and the Suns after he felt disrespected, giving Booker a taste of the Luka special. However, after that series, the Mavericks' trip to the Bay Area saw the team lose a five-game conference finals matchup to the eventual championship-winning Golden State Warriors. But this summer, Luka seemed to use that series loss as a source of motivation to lose some weight, and having visibly added muscle and even a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar-esque hook shot based off the tape, expect Doncic to be even better in this upcoming campaign. In terms of the supporting cast for Dallas, Tim Hardaway Jr., who's the team's typical second option, missed the entire 2022 playoffs. Tim's going to be back in full form for 2022-23, which makes the Mavs increasingly dangerous. However, after being eliminated by the Golden State Warriors in the conference finals, it was clear the Mavericks needed more reinforcements than just Hardaway Jr. Specifically, Dallas needed a talent who not just paired well with Luka, but complemented their superstar in terms of position and playing style. In three out of his first four regular seasons in the association, Doncic has averaged at least 27.7 points per game. In the playoffs, that production's only increased in his three appearances, having never failed to average 31 points per game in the postseason. The Slovenian even posted as many as 35.7 points each night in the 2021 playoffs, numbers which have fueled the Mavericks back into a perennial playoff team after a rebuild in the post-Dirk Nowitzki era. Cue the Mavericks front office trading for Christian Wood, potentially this franchise's next great big man. A versatile power forward whose two-way talent in terms of his rim protection, rebounding, finishing, and shooting ability have been hidden on the developing Houston Rockets and before that, the Detroit Pistons. Over the last two seasons in H-Town, the now 27-year-old posted solid 19-point, 10-rebound averages on 51% shooting from the field and 38% from three-point range. Christian's going to thrive as a pick-and-roll outlet next to Luka Doncic, who gets blitzed about every possession and has needed a big man of Wood's caliber for a very long time. Chris Stapp's Porzingis struggled to mesh with Luka, but the massive difference between Porzingis and Wood is the inside game. To be fair, Chris Stapps and Christian have similar efficiency from every area on the floor, but Chris Stapps finished with just 25 dunks between 51 games in Washington and Dallas. Conversely, Christian finished with just under five times that amount of dunks with 120 throwdowns, albeit in 17 more games played in Houston. Point is, Porzingis shied away from attacking the basket, which may be what the Wizards want from him in the nation's capital, 
floor spacing is the hottest commodity in the modern NBA, Wood isn't some one-dimensional stretch big, but don't get it twisted. In terms of out on the perimeter, he's got a quick yet shockingly balanced shooting release. Christian's 7'3 wingspan and 9'4 inch standing reach makes his jumper unguardable for minis forced to switch or scramble onto him. Even the most fundamental of three-point contests or closeout from defenders struggle to make an impact on the big man's high release point. But it's the ferocity that Wood plays with on the interior which makes him a special player. In terms of in the half court, that's where Wood's exceptional hands to catch passes in traffic and bully past or jump over rim protectors looming in the restricted area will be a godsend for Maverick fans, but specifically it'll be beneficial for Luka Doncic. Andrew Wiggins did an exceptional job at holding Luka to a 41.5% field goal percentage in the conference finals, all due respect to the newest New York Knick, Jalen Brunson, Without Dallas having a viable second option who could carry any type of scoring load, the Warriors were able to get away with blitzing Luka in pick and rolls, plus playing physical full court defense, or straight up trapping Doncic at half court. Christian Wood isn't a superstar by any stretch of the imagination, but he's a player whose skill set, in terms of the screen setting, toughness, splice of rim protection, and elite scoring on two levels, meaning from beyond the arc and at the basket, will significantly relieve the pressure which weighed heavily on Luka's shoulders in 2022's playoffs. JaVale McGee's not quite as underrated as Christian Wood, but the former Shaqton MVP's combination of springiness and ever-improving muscle makes him a nightmare to hold down on the offensive glass. The Dallas Mavericks' newest starting center signed a three-year deal worth $20 million, over 74 games for a Phoenix Suns team that won 64 games, JaVale posted his highest points per game average in four years at 9.2, which came along with averages of 6.7 boards and 1.1 blocks. Productive stats, considering McGee only received just under 16 minutes each night. However, there's no denying JB is going to be a big loss, and the Knicks got a great player. But speaking on the loss of one of their top scorers, Mavs coach Jason Kidd had this to say, quote, we can't replace him, he's a great player, I'm happy for him and his family, signing a deal in New York, well deserved, we wanted him, but he picked New York, but when you talk about Christian Wood and Tim Hardaway Jr. coming back, everybody's asked the question, and we believe the points will be there, and we believe we're going to be a bigger team, nothing against JB's height, but with Spencer starting, our starting five is going to be big with JaVale starting at center, we believe we're going to have a lot more offense coming off the bench, end quote. Then there's the other side of the story, which are the potential concerns with this new Maverick squad. McGee will be 35 next season, and while he's an explosive vertical athlete, he's limited guarding out in space. How much does he have left in the tank is a real question. Also, Wood's been a solid defender in drop coverage at times. I mentioned he was a rim protector earlier, but consistency defensively has always been a question for him. But to be fair, no defense is going to shut down Stephen Curry and the Warriors offense what it takes to achieve the seemingly insurmountable task of beating the Dubs four times out of seven is by matching the Warriors' offensive execution. If the Mavs can somewhat keep up with the Warriors' ball and player movement, plus take care of the basketball, they give themselves at least a chance on any given night. That's easier said than done with active phenoms up and down the Warrior lineup, but the Mavericks are nonetheless one of the NBA's top contenders in 2022-23. What's going to make or break the Mavericks in 2023? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out and the top five commenters by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last video I asked, what's the sweetest bit of Stephen Curry revenge? Troy Sampson gets the shout out for saying Steph's best revenge by far was reminding Kendrick Perkins and Dominique Foxworth of their zero finals he would win. It was King Petty in his fullness remembering the actual gesture itself. I think it also added fuel to Big Perk because of the words he and Steph had back when Perk was a Cavalier on the bench in street clothes, and Steph thought Perk tried to rip him. Steph stood that sequoia down and went word for word.